We're joined now by two political experts to dig deeper. Richard Saccharides, a former senior advisor to Bill Clinton. He's now a writer for the New Yorker.com and a Democratic strategist. And Sherry Jacobus, a GOP strategist and the president of Capital Strategies PR. Nailed the name. Feeling Nailed good it, about it. Right Saccharides, it. what are you Dems so worried about? You want to be president? Go make the case early and often. Well, I'm not worried. Uh, oh, and, you're worried. And, no, I'm not worried. Do I look worried? worried? You look worried. <laughs> I don't think I'm worried. Um, we're, we're excited that we've got someone who a lot of people support and who the country is excited about in Hillary Clinton. And of Address course, why some of the Dems are saying she got out there too soon. There's too much heat for too long. Well, first of all, I don't think, first of all, I don't really think that she is doing this by choice. I think we're talking about her. Karl Rove is pushing out this nonsense <clears throat> about her health. So we're all talking about it. But uh, I think it's true to a certain extent. Nobody likes to be told who to vote for, right? And uh, primaries are a good process, a good winnowing process. So I think that she will, if she decides to run, if she decides to run, uh, and she still has to make that decision probably at the end of the year, I think there will be a competitive Democratic contest for president. I think she will have to make her case, and I think she will do so brilliantly. What, what does she do about the inevitability factor? I mean, Deval Patrick's talking about it yesterday. He's concerned about it a little bit. What can she do? I think you have to ask for and fight for every vote, and I think she will do that. I think, you know, the, the criticism last time was that she took it a little bit for granted, and I don't think she'll make that the mistake. The coronation. I, she will definitely not make that mistake this time around if she decides to run. What do you think, Sherry? You're going after her early and often. What do you think you're going to do here? Put some uh, damage, look, some chinks in the armor? Look, she's run for president before. She's got about 100% name ID. There are candidates, potential candidates, wannabe candidates that would kill for that. Uh, so you can't have it both ways. She's Hillary Clinton. Uh, her health, her age, her, her family history, everything she's ever said, done, not done, her lack of accomplishments, uh, anything that she considers an accomplishment, it is all fair game. Uh, so to pretend that she isn't who she is and to pretend that she's not running, come on, we all know she's running. Uh, I think uh, a lot of her Democratic colleagues are a little bit concerned. It's not just the inevitability factor. They may not want her. They may not want to support her or defend her. Uh, so, you know, they might want to have some Sherry, room for somebody about, else. Sherry, talk about having it both ways. Is Karl Rove trying to do this, the exact same thing in terms of he wants to talk about her health, he wants to make it an issue, but then he says yesterday, I'm not questioning her health. I'm confused. Uh, I, I think you're right on that. I think he should be very open about it. Her health, her age, it's all fair game. It's fair game for every candidate. It's always been fair game when for every candidate. When the better ideas I don't think he should be introduced. apologetic. I, I get the game. The game's more toxic all the time. <laughs> we do the negative because it's proven that's how you win. But at some point, because it's getting to smell a little bit like the Obamacare debate, where Obamacare sucks, where are the better ideas? Hillary sucks. Where are the better ideas for who should lead and why? When do we start hearing them from your party? Well, we're, we're, we've been hearing about them. We have a deep bench. Um, I think we're going to have a very robust Republican primary. Well, that's for I sure. Think, I think the Democrats, some of them are hoping that, that uh, their party can have a little bit of a robust primary. Yeah, you could too, have so Paul Ryan out there. Defend. Could be Paul Ryan saying, here's what I think about fiscal uh, management. Here's how yeah. I think it should be done. It's not done this Are way right now. Are people paying attention, though, now? Well, and but, that's, that's kind of the problem. But should you pander to people's fears and negative expectations of politics? Oh, she's going to die. Oh, she's so I, I don't old think that's frail. what's happening here. I think we have. Why, why else would Rove say These it? are legitimate questions, and it's also up to the, the Hillary Clinton camp uh, to try and control the agenda and talk about what she wants to talk about, but she doesn't have anything to talk about. Should so the Clintons be surprised that this, was gonna, that, void. that this was that this is coming at them? I mean, maybe it's a, just more of a problem of timing that it's coming so early, and so they can't be surprised by it later if it's coming later when she's actually running. But should they be surprised at all that the issue of her health came up? It was what? a huge. It was part of the discussion Listen, I, when I, she didn't, when she, when she couldn't testify before Congress. I think that uh, this should surprise no one. And you know, as as Chris just said, yeah. I mean, this is what politics has come down to, especially now uh, in the in the preliminaries when there aren't substantive issues being discussed. It's all this negative stuff. So I don't think that Hillary Clinton will be surprised. I think they will throw try to make up a lot of stuff throw a lot at her, and I think she, if she decides to run, she'll be ready for it. Let's talk about the Republican field just for a millisecond, if we can. Um, Jeb Bush giving a commencement speech at a, a, a Christian liberal arts college. He said this in part of his speech. Listen to what he said. If you feel inspired to serve your fellow citizens, don't let the ugliness of politics keep you from pursuing public office. And he says there is always room for informed, engaged, passionate leaders at every level of government.
Sounds Everyone like, said, sounds like, hint, hint, hint. Sounds like he was urging Hillary Clinton to uh, run. Okay. <laughs> Look, his family's been through the mill you know, with everything. They've run for office and successfully and unsuccessfully, and they know what it's like. Um, but I would say, when you contrast a Jeb Bush, who also, the, the Bush name, obviously, is very well known, yep. just like Clinton, and you talk about going out there and trying to control the agenda and saying what you want people to be talking about, he's controlling it. He went out and made a speech, and we're talking about it. We're not talking about his health or anything. That is how you do it. He's taking advantage sure, he hasn't, he, of the situation, which he, he should do. He has also said that he, his decision to run will be based on can he right. do it joyfully. He very yeah. much understands the impact that it has on a family. When you see where things are, are and how dirty things get, is there any way to joyfully run? Uh, you know, in the past when his children were younger, I think that made a difference as it does to a lot of candidates. Now that his children are grown, I, I think he, he feels that the family can take it a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, but that's a consideration that any politician, uh, anybody running for office, has to keep in mind uh, is their family. And, you know, well, little kids are a lot different than big kids. So joyfully that, that or might not, have he said something it. that is, you could argue, inconsistent where he's been as a moderate uh, socially when he said to this, he had to offer red meat to this Christian constitu mm -hmm. constituency. And him saying, you know, hey, hold on to your faith, even though the federal government is trying to destroy religious free expression. We all know uh, where he's going with that. that. It'll be interesting to see if Jeb Bush can live up to that standard of politics, because I guess if he can, he won't make it through the primary. Well, and that was a real indication that he is very seriously considering running uh, because he does not usually use that line in his standard, uh, standard talking points. And uh, it's really a, a, you know, a bow to the right. Uh, so I think, he's, I think he's very seriously considering running. I hope he does run because I think, you know, he, I think he's got a lot of good credentials. Uh, he is certainly qualified. Uh, by you know what he's done previously to be president, but I think the Republican Party could, will not be able to nominate a Jeb Bush because I think they have, have moved so far to the right, and I think that it'll end up helping the Democrats. If Jeb Bush runs in a Republican primary, he will not get the nomination, and people, the American people, will see how right wing the Republican Party is. Give us a quick Republican Republican Party. Party. because all, half of these predictions are always wrong when we're this far ahead. So we're going to keep this <laughs> well, tape. Well, I hope we keep the tape. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, I disagree. Republicans, you know, they, all, they they run to the right in the primary, just like Democrats run. To the left, then you come to the center, and, and Republicans obviously do uh, nominate right of center, but not far right candidates. We've been doing it. We did it last time. We did it the time before that. So I think he's got a good shot. A few problems, but that's what primaries are for. Hey, at least he wasn't asking them to pray for Hillary because she's sick and old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a that step. Will, in the, that'll be next. That was a step. In the we'll right hear direction. that next. Sherry, Richard, very Great good to, to have see you. Guys, good morning.